everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith, and I think it is wonderful that you are here with me today for another Wanderlust Wednesday. Today, we will be traveling to the country of Haiti. Before we do that, though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and below each video, click the thumbs up. Also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, it is time to pack our suitcases and hop on that plane, and we are going to fly to Haiti. Haiti is in an area of the world known as the Caribbean. The Caribbean is a region around the Americas that is made up of the Caribbean Sea, its coasts, and its islands. The Caribbean is southeast of the Gulf of Mexico, east of Central America, and north of South America. And I don't know if you noticed it when you looked at it, but Haiti is shaped like a horseshoe, kind of like this. And so that means that it has a lot of coastlines. So the coastlines go right along the edge of Haiti, just like that. And so they have a lot, a lot of beaches. If Haiti were shaped more with a flat edge like this, they would only have the coastlines along here. But because of the way that it's shaped, they have beaches all over their country. Isn't that cool? So the climate in Haiti is rather tropical, which means it's mild to warm temperatures. And the average temperature in Haiti ranges between 73 and 95 degrees. There are two rainy seasons, and those are April to June and October through November. Agriculture provides a very large part of Haiti's culture. Roughly 40 to 50 percent of Haitians work in farming. Haiti is the world's leading producer of vetiver, which is a root plant used to make luxury perfumes, essential oils, and fragrances. So Haiti is able to provide one half of the world's supply. The currency in Haiti is known as a gourd. And the Haitian dollar is made up of about five gourds. However, the vast majority of businesses accept U.S. currency as well. Which also leads me to our next point, that tourism is a large part of Haiti's culture as well, though it's not as large a part as they would like. And recently, there has been a push to encourage tourists to travel to Haiti. Haiti's white sand beaches, their mountainous scenery, and their year-round warm climate is perfect for tourists. And several big chain hotels have recently opened, so I think they are on their way to gaining more tourists. Haiti has a population of 10,700,000, and about half the population, about 50%, are under 20. So you can tell that the culture of Haiti is very, very young. Most of the people who live in Haiti are descendants of former black African slaves, and the remainder of the people are of European or Arab descent. There are two official languages, which are French and Haitian Creole. French is the official language of the schools, so if you go to school, you would learn in French. It's the language of most uh, ceremonies, so weddings and graduations are held in French. And it is the language that most documents are written in as well. About 42% of Haitians speak French. And then the other language that I mentioned was Haitian Creole, and virtually everybody speaks Haitian Creole. The vocabulary of Haitian Creole is about 90% French, but the grammar reflects West African languages. As for the culture in Haiti, it is very live and vibrant. It encompasses a blend of traditional French and African customs, but it's also mixed with sizable contributions from Spanish and indigenous cultures. The culture of Haiti is greatly reflected in paintings, music, and literature. In art, you will notice that there are some typical subjects that are painted or photographed. Those subjects are usually big delectable foods or lush landscapes, maybe some market activities and jungle animals. Their art includes brilliant colors and sly humor too. If you were to travel to Haiti, the food that you would taste is Haitian Creole. Haitian Creole has an extensive use of herbs and a liberal use of peppers in it. 
A typical dish that you might find would be rice and red kidney beans with sauce, which is topped with red snapper fish, tomatoes, and onions. Rice is often eaten with beans alone in Haiti, but it's usually completed with some sort of meat. And a bean puree is often poured on top of the rice, beans, and meat. Doesn't that sound yummy? I think I would like traveling there, if for the food alone, but obviously for the other cultural aspects and the people as well. As for the holidays that are celebrated in Haiti, the big one is known as Carnival. Carnival week is the most festive time of the year in Haiti. Music and parade floats and dancing and singing are often found in the streets. All night parties are not uncommon either. <laughs> Uh, the sports that you would find in Haiti, you would definitely find football, which if you're in the U.S., you might recognize as soccer. And basketball is also becoming much more popular, too. Haiti has participated in the Olympics since the 1900s, and they have received quite a few medals there as well. One last thing about Haiti that I think that you would find very fun to know about are the tap-tap bands. If you were in Haiti, you would definitely see these on the roads. They are very colorfully painted buses, and they serve as taxis, and they travel all around the island. The translation of Tap Tap is Quick Quick. That seems like an appropriate name for a taxi, don't you think? <laughs> all right, well, we are going to draw our very own Tap Tap vans today, and we're going to first learn together how to draw a van, and then you get to pick the colors that you want to put on your Tap Tap, and you can design it any way that you want, and I'm sure that it would be beautifully accepted on the roads of Haiti. All right, so to do this activity, you will need just a few supplies. You will need a piece of white paper, just copy or printer paper is totally fine, and then you will need a pencil, and then you will need something to color in your uh, tap tap. So you can use colored pencils, you can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use paint, it's totally up to you. All right, so the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to draw our van. And if you haven't drawn a van before, no worries. We're going to go through it step by step together. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take our white piece of paper and we are going to fold it in half like a hamburger. So that is the short way. So we're going to line up our corners there and then we are going to crease the paper and then we're going to open it back up and then we are going to fold our paper the other way, like a hot dog or the long way. So we're going to just fold it over there, line our corners up there, and then crease it. If your corners don't exactly touch, don't worry about it at all. This does not have to be exact. All right, so now when we open our paper, we're going to put it the long way in front of us, and then we are going to take our pencil and we are going to start drawing our van. So before we get too involved in this, I want you to um, realize that when we have been, when I have drawn this, I have drawn kind of some big shapes, right? I bet that you can kind of see this back half of the van as a square, but I have rounded some of the corners. We're going to first draw the square with sharp corners, normal corner, normal square corners, and then we'll come back and we will adjust the, the roundness of the van. And we're going to do some funky, kind of similar things down here with the wheels too. We are going to draw a square first and then we will come back and erase some of it to put our wheels in. So the other thing that I should have mentioned that you need is a good eraser on your pencil. All right, so we have our paper here with its folds and we are going to use those folds as our guidelines. So the first thing that I am going to do, I am going to put my pencil on my center fold and that's probably about an inch from the top of the paper. About that much, doesn't have to be exact. And then I am going to draw a, I don't know if this will end up being a rectangle or a square. It'll probably be kind of rectangular. I am going to draw this rectangle. And the very last thing that I am going to do is I'm going to draw right up my fold, my guideline, to complete that rectangle, just like that. And then I am going to put my pencil in the same place that I started my rectangle, and I am going to draw this 
funny shape. Now this is kind of a triangle. You can see it has three sides, but one of them is very rounded. So I am going to try to do that very rounded uh, line in my triangle. Of course, this doesn't have to be exact at all. I'm just going to draw that kind of rounded line and I am going to come straight down to the, the same place on the paper as I drew my rectangle. Does that make sense? So I am going to stop about an inch from the bottom of the paper because I drew my rectangle about an inch from the bottom of that paper. All right, so I stopped right there and then I am just going to connect it back to my rectangle. I don't even need to draw the third line of my triangle because it's already there for my rectangle, right? Okay, so now once we have this, we are going to draw some tires in because of course a tap tap can't move without tires and wheels, right? All right, so I am going to draw a circle right here in the middle of my triangle do you see that right there? I just drew right through that line, no biggie. And then I'm going to draw a smaller uh, circle right there that will be kind of like the hubcap, the inner part of the wheel. And then I'm going to do that back in the middle of my rectangle. I am going to draw a circle, and then I'm going to draw a smaller circle inside. All right, so I have my wheels, but I think I probably should give the wheels some wheel wells. So to do that, I am going to just simply kind of outline my circle that makes my wheel um, in this triangle part. So you see, I just kind of drew over the wheel there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I am just kind of going over the wheel with a half circle. And then I am going to simply go back in and I am going to erase the line of my triangle. So the bottom of my tap tap van, I'm going to erase it right around my wheel. I'm also going to erase it just on the other side of the wheel in that wheel well. Let's see, I'll move my hand out of the way. Does that make sense? All right, and then once I've gotten those erased, then I will just go back and I will touch up those lines of the wheel and the wheel well to make sure that they are connected there. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I'm just erasing that line that uh, was the first line, one of the very first lines that I drew making up my rectangle. I'm just erasing right in there and then I'm erasing just on the outside of the wheel between the wheel and the wheel well. And then I'm going to go back and touch up my lines that I maybe erased that I didn't mean to. Okay. So, there we go. We're pretty close, don't you think? All right, but I promised that we were going to round this corner out. So I am going to just simply start on the line of the rectangle, the top line, and then I'm just going to kind of draw a really wide U that connects to the right-hand side of my rectangle. So I've just kind of cut that corner, and then I will go in and I will erase that harsh corner that I had right there. All right, what do you think? Does it look complete? Not quite. We need some windows, we need some bumpers, we need a headlight, right? All right, so then to do that, I am just simply pretty much going to, at least for the windows, going to kind of trace along the top part of that triangle, and I kind of made a curvy triangle right there inside it. Do you see that? And then in my rectangle, I am going to draw two curvy, kind of rectangular, maybe square, depending on your uh, specific tap tap, uh, two square or rectangular um, shapes right in the back of the rectangle. So now I have windows in the back. I think I'll give the person, the driver, a little handle to get in there, because there's usually a handle there. Um, you can draw a handle here too if you want. That usually is kind of a side handle on a van. It doesn't have to be, you could draw a normal handle. It's your tap tap, you decide. And then I'm going to draw a little half circle right here on the front of the tap tap, that will become a headlight. And then I'm going to draw another half circle that becomes the bumper, the front bumper, and then I will do that here on the back too, and I will draw the bumper there. All right, there you go. You have your tap tap van ready to color. So then, guess what? You get to do whatever you want. You can color these 
really fun and funky designs. You could color it, you know, just a normal color too. If you wanted just a full one color, it is totally your call. I am not going to make you wait through my coloring for you to get started on your coloring. I want you to just jump right in. And then I would love to see your completed tap taps. If you get a chance to make one of these beautiful tap taps that you got to draw all yourself, please ask a grown up to take a picture and put that on our Facebook page. I can't wait to see those. Well, I am so glad that you traveled with me today to Haiti. We learned a lot about the culture and we learned about the fun way to get around Haiti, don't you think? I'm so glad that you traveled with me. I can't wait to see you on Friday. We'll be talking about a fun film and we'll be doing another fun video then. So until then, thanks so much for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.